Cannabis Stocks, brought to you by Rich TV Live. Um, what's going on, guys? It's Investing Hustler here, and today I have with me Rich TV Live. How are you doing, Rich? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. So uh, today we're going to talk about the market, why the market is like this, and um, what, what to expect with these red days. What do you expect from the market now? Now that we, it kind of feels like we're in a bear market. Do you think we're in a bear market? I think that a lot of people have to remind themselves that a month ago we hit all-time highs in the cannabis sector. Yeah. And even the Dow Jones hit all-time highs this year. The NASDAQ hit all-time highs this year. The TSX hit all-time highs this year. So everything is naturally coming back from all-time highs, which it usually does when you hit 52-week highs. Now we're approaching 52-week lows in a lot of stocks in the cannabis sector. I believe it is an amazing buying opportunity. However, mm -hmm. Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about. And when we talk about stocks here, we're not trying to tell you to buy them, okay? Yeah. Uh, my personal opinion is strictly my personal opinion. I love this sector. I love this industry. I believe long-term, a lot of these companies are going to be a lot higher than they are. But I believe that this entire sector is being brought down because of two reasons, Tilray and Canopy Growth. Yeah. Tilray went up way too high. Canopy Growth went up way too high. It caused a major out of whack situation here in the cannabis sector where companies are trading at price to earning ratios that are not justified because of that. And because they're two of the leaders in the entire sector, they are now coming back to reality to yep. more close to reality price to earning ratios. That's close to what wall street and Bay street wants, which typically is five to 15 times price to earning ratios. These are companies that are trading at in some cases, a hundred, 200 times price to earning ratios and they need to come back to reality. This is what I've been saying since the beginning. That's why I don't own Tilray. That's why I don't own Canopy Growth. It's why I recently sold Aurora Cannabis at $13. I yeah. don't feel like these companies can sustain these prices yet mm -hmm. until they start having more revenue. And I feel like that's why the market is bringing back to these lower levels. They will eventually hit a floor. They will bottom out, and then they will do a dead cat bounce, and you will see them explode again. Exactly. So canopy growth, since it's all time high, has dropped forty percent. And um, I'm reading articles that people still think it's overvalued. So you you still you agree with that? You think canopy growth, even at these levels, even after a forty percent drop from its fifty two week high, is overvalued? Uh, yes, I do. And um, what do you think is a is a fair price for canopy growth? I think when companies are trading at around. 20 to 40 times price to earning ratios in the cannabis sector that for this industry should be the standard uh -huh. when wall street is looking for price to earning ratios of five to 15 percent and then in the cannabis sector it's 25 times to 250 times price to earning ratios yep. it's out of whack so i think when it gets back down to like let's say 20 to 40 times price to earning ratios I think that that will be more reasonable. So I still think that Canopy Growth and Tilray have a long ways to go down. Will they go down? That remains to be seen. Yeah. But right now, they have been coming down and everything has been coming down for the most part. So Yeah, exactly. What, what did you think about their earnings? I thought their earnings were okay. I think yeah. that the, their, their debt is high right now. Their, their, their spending is high. I think a lot of these companies are spending a lot of money for sales and marketing and administration, and they're not going to get their ROI, the return on their investment. So I think that the street is responding the way it should. The legalization in Canada has been a massive joke. It's been a disaster. Uh, they said that they didn't want private companies to exist. Private companies are doing more than existing. Uh, they're thriving. Yeah. The companies that are dealing with the government are not. There's all kinds of delays. There's all kinds of, there's a postal strike. It's a disaster right now. It's a joke. So what do you expect? You can't expect it to thrive when the industry as a whole is not. There's all kinds of problems right now in the industry. So I think it's going to take about six to 12 months to become normal and to sustain itself. And I think that that's pretty standard considering what we've been going through. Yeah. Well, I do think uh, canopy growth is overspending because they're just trying to get a jump start before 
U.S. becomes fully legal right, for recreational marijuana. So maybe they're just trying to get a jump start. So you might see these companies overspending in the first couple of years because once uh, marijuana becomes legal, which brings up the next question, uh, I guess uh, you've heard about Andrew Left. You know Andrew Left. I've heard he, you guys kind of talk in a way. Uh, I read, I heard an interview of Andrew Left where he said that once marijuana becomes legal in the United States, that the Canadian marijuana sector will become irrelevant, that marijuana will become, like the marijuana companies will become irrelevant in Canada once it becomes legal in the United States because of how massive and how much money comes out of the States. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that uh, Andrew Left is entitled to his opinion. Obviously he's in America, he's gonna say what he wants to. But obviously Canada right now, they are about 80% of the market. Mm -hmm. So if, the Canadian companies are about 80% of the market right now. I don't see how you could even make that comment. I think that comment's laughable. Now, yeah. long-term, will America pass Canada? Absolutely, because Canada is one-tenth the size of America. Exactly. But Canada has always been a world leader in cannabis. And Canada will always be a world leader in cannabis. Mm -hmm. Because this is where we grow the best cannabis. Yeah. So... If Canada's always been a world leader in Vancouver, specifically where I'm from, has always been one of BC Kush is, is world known. It's synonymous with cannabis. So if, if BC and Vancouver and Canada has been world known for cannabis and is right now the world leader in cannabis right now, I find it laughable that anyone would make that comment. And it's actually kind of ignorant, but I'm not surprised where it's coming from. <laughs> Yeah, he's been shorting uh, Canadian cannabis stocks for quite some time now. Um, so, so you think it's a good move that all these companies are kind of overspending right now, trying to get that jump start? Like, for example, Canopy and Aurora, or do you think they they might be getting a little too ahead of themselves? I think that they overspent because they had to. There's yeah. been a lot of articles talking about how the rules changed as of October 17th. So they oh. did a lot of spending prior to October 17th because as of October 17th. Oh the rules were making it more difficult to spend money on advertising, sales, and marketing specifically. So that's why a lot of these companies spent, and they've all come back and said, Canopy Growth has already come out and said, Bruce Linton has said, we are not going to spend as much on sales and marketing moving forward. We're only gonna be spending half of what we did in the last quarter because of the new rules that have been implemented. So I think that that's going to really help these companies moving forward. I also think these companies' revenues will only get bigger and more robust as yeah. they move into some of these facilities that they're building. So I feel like the future is extremely bright. This is a fantastic buying opportunity for a lot of companies. So we need to be very patient. We need to be ninjas. We need to be snipers. And we need to buy in the deep red and sell when they have an explosion and when there will be an explosion, because there will be, because if you look at the charts of all of these companies, historically over the last two years, they've all gone up and they've gone down. They go up and they go down. And a month ago, we were at all time highs. So yeah. we will see all time highs again. That's what this industry does. It is very forgiving. So it's okay, the shorters can have their laugh today, but they will be crying tomorrow. <laughs> exactly, you'll be buying when they're crying. Um, <clears throat> Which, okay, so I have a second question. Uh, it was a statement made, made by Kevin O'Leary, and he said something about how um, growing pot in Canada is a bad business, is bad for business because we cannot do it all year round because we have winter, so during the winter, we're forced to grow it indoors, which becomes expensive, unlike growing in a warm climate like Mexico, like South America, like um, somewhere warm in the States, like Miami, California. He says that it, it's bad bad for business because we can't do it all year round. What do you think about that statement? I'd like to know his history in growing. <laughs> yeah. He, he. Secondly, I uh, don't agree with that. Actually. Mm -hmm. um, there is, there is a truth to that. So there is a truth to that. However, however, because of the Canadian climate, mm -hmm. we have the ability to build indoor grow operations. Which apparently is better. <gasps> surprise, yeah. surprise. So since Canada is one of the biggest countries in the world yeah. with land, maybe mm -hmm. not population, but land-wise, would that not make Canada one of the best places in the world to grow? And because we have four seasons, 
We also have very fresh water. We also have a very clean country. It's not heavily polluted because we're not overpopulated. This makes it one of the best countries in the world to grow cannabis. That's why Canada is one of the number one growing countries in the world. And that's why you don't see cannabis coming out of Mexico that is high as quality as Canada. So it's very interesting when people make comments like that because my questions and my response to them is this, what experience do you have in growing? Mm -hmm. And is Canada or is Canada not one of the largest lands and countries as far as land in the world? I think it's- Does Canada not have one of the largest fresh water supplies in the world? And is Canada not historically been and is right now the world leader in cannabis? And I almost find it shameful that a Canadian comes out and makes a comment like that. <laughs> He's makes you wonder. It makes you wonder if he sold his soul. You know what I mean? Maybe. I had I had no idea he was Canadian. But yeah, I was just uh, very surprised to hear him. Say that. He's Canadian. He's a dragon. Yeah. Come on, man. We yeah. know he's Canadian. I've seen him on Shark Tank too, but I guess they have people from all over the world hosting Shark Tank as a shark. Yeah, no, he's Canadian, and I find it. Um, yeah. I just find it sad that a Canadian would make a comment like that. It just goes to show how little people really know about this industry. Yeah. Or maybe he's just talking about an industry he knows nothing about. And well, I mean, he's very, he's a billionaire, right? He's, yeah, he's, very, he's very well himself. connected. He's very well connected. Yeah. But there's a reason why Canada is the global leader in cannabis right now. And they're not going to just get knocked off the shelf uh, as number one in the world overnight because Andrew left and Kevin O'Leary said so. Especially when we have a head start of every, ahead of everyone. Like we have a nice head start. When, when is it going to become legal in the U.S.? A, a year from now? Well, it's not even now? about that. We've been the world leader in cannabis always. Yeah. We've always been the world leader in cannabis. So how are you going to just knock mm -hmm. us off overnight? Yeah. It's not going to happen. And the reality is all the best growers in the world are here in Canada. They have the experience growing, not the bankers and not all the billionaires with all the millions and the billions. Just because you have money doesn't mean you know how to grow. Two different ball games, which we've already seen here with the government coming in, stepping in, and we've seen what's happened since they stepped in. The entire market has collapsed because they've proven that they don't know what they're doing. Mm. So, so do you think we're in a bear market or this is just a, a mild correction and do you, what about a Santa Claus rally? Do you think we're going to see a Santa Claus rally or we're going to see a bear market and it might drag on until next year? Just, this, is a, this is just a guess. doesn't have to be accurate. No facts behind this. Just like your guess. I think that what goes down must come up. And uh, we just a week ago had a big run. And before that, we had a big crash. And then before that big crash, we had a big run. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll have a big run again. This is uh, nothing new to me. Yeah, no, exactly. It's been very volatile and a lot of people have, have profited off this volatility. So as long as you're not a bag holder, you'll, you'll be winning, which is, um, would, you, would you short these stocks right now? I, I haven't, I don't, I wouldn't short marijuana stocks. It's just way too risky to short them. I, but I've been buying in the red. Yeah. I mean, like, that's what I mean. Like if you're a shorter, would you be shorting them at 52 week lows? Knowing no, definitely not, definitely not. I right? Yeah, they can go down a little bit more, but how much more? I mean, at some point, they're going to hit a floor. And then yeah. when they do, they'll do a dead cat bounce and they'll explode.